All right. So a quick review of the distance and midpoint formulas, and then we're going to use them in a lot of different contexts. So before talking about the distance formula, we're going to talk Pythagorean theorem because it's the exact same thing. So Pythagorean theorem, if the length of the hypotenuse, which is that side across from the right angle, the hypotenuse of a right triangle, very, very important. Otherwise, this is not true. So it has to be a right triangle and the lengths of the other two sides are a and b, then c squared equals a squared plus b squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared, whichever way you want to write it. So where does the distance formula come from? Let's pretend that we have some point x1, y1, and x2, y2 right here, and we want to find the distance between them. In other words, c. So I'm going to transfer this picture down here. It's going to be one point x1, y1, and another point x2, y2. And so the point is, is let's turn this into a right triangle situation by finding how far to the right did we go and how far up did we go. So to find how far right you went, well, you have to figure out the difference between the two x's, and so you do x2 minus x1. And to find the difference between the y's, how far up you went, you do y2 minus y1. This works the other way around as well. And then Pythagorean theorem says that this distance is equal to this distance squared is equal to x2 squared, x, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So notice that this is your a squared, this is your b squared, and the only thing we're going to do now is take the square root of both sides, and you have your distance formula. So the distance from one point to the next is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. So the deal is, is that people always mess up or forget, is it plus, is it minus, where is it plus, where is it minus? And so here's the deal. It's just Pythagorean theorem. We subtract because we're finding how far we went from to the right or to the left. So you subtract how far up and down, you subtract. So tip to remember it, it's the Pythagorean theorem in disguise. a squared plus b squared. So, on to the midpoint. Where does the midpoint formula come from? Let's use our same two points. To find the middle, the middle point, my biggest thing is think average. It's in the middle. So how do you find the middle of two numbers? Well, if you found the middle of the horizontal distance, so x1 plus x2 divided by 2, middle of horizontal, and the middle of the, hor and the, middle of the vertical, y1 plus y2. And why I'm doing dividing by 2 is you add them up and divide by how many there are. And so this right here is the midpoint formula. Average the x's, average the y's. So let's put it in a box to make it official. Midpoint of two points, x1 plus x2 divided by 2. Notice that you can do x2 plus x1, and it doesn't make a difference at all. In the distance formula, same deal. y1 plus y2, just to keep it consistent, divided by 2. So tip to remember it, average x, average y. So let's find the distance between two points, 6, 2, and 0, negative 2. I'm going to plot this, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, to help out with the visual again, and 0, negative 2, so this one down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the horizontal distance. I went to the right 6, and again, how I got that is 6 minus 0. 
or 0 minus 6. And just to keep it consistent, we'll do 0 minus 6. And we'll do 6 squared. Notice that had you done 6 minus 0, I'm just doing x2 minus x1. Plus, with the x's now, or with the y's now, so this is 6, this is 4, because we're doing negative 2 minus 2, and so negative 4 squared, that's 16. And so you add those two together, you get 52. 52 is the distance squared, and so if you take the square root of all of that, you get D. So you could approximate that. Square root of 52 is approximately 7.21. That would be one way of doing it. Or remember to reduce radicals, you can do square root of 52 is the same thing as 4 times 13, I believe. Let me just double check that. 13. And so then the square root of 4 is 2. And what's left over is 13. So 2 root 13 or 7.21, whichever they're asking for. Approximate or exact. Find the midpoint of the line segment. Average of the x's, average of the y's. So 4 plus 1 divided by 2. And that's 4 plus this one. And so that's 5 divided by 2, 5 halves, or 2 and a half, whichever way you want. And 1 plus a negative 5 divided by 2 this is the x plus the x and the y plus the y. So negative 4 divided by 2. So your final answer may be 2.5 comma negative 2. 5 halves is... 5 halves is 2.5, and negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. All right, so let's find the perpendicular bisector of AB. You've got two points, 3, 5, and 9, negative 3. I'm going to plot those. Just get a quick picture so you can see what's going on. 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this point A. Point B. Let x, y be any point on the perpendicular bisector. And so we want AB is this line. We want to be perpendicular to that and bisecting it. So it's got to be bisecting means cutting in half. And so we know it's going to go through the midpoint. So first thing I'm going to find is the midpoint. So 3 plus 9 divided by 2. Average the x's. So that's 12 divided by 2, which is 6. And 5 plus a negative 3 is um, 2. 2 divided by 1 is... Sorry, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's my midpoint. That's what my, my line has to go through. So we have the bisecting part of it. Now we need the perpendicular part of it. So perpendicular, that has to deal with slope. And so I'm going to find the slope of AB. Slope of AB is how far down versus how far across have we gone. So that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus y, x1. Again, the difference in the y's. So that's 5 to negative 3. That's an 8. And we've gone down 8. And we've gone across from 3 to 9. And so we've gone across 6. So the difference is negative 8 over 6. Again, all I'm doing is negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. And 9 minus 3 is 6. And so that can be reduced to negative 4 thirds. And now I'm going to say the perpendicular slope then. Opposite reciprocal. Remember that from your Algebra 1 classes. And so the opposite reciprocal is um, 3 over 4. Notice that it's positive. 
and then I'm just going to use my midpoint, 6, 1, and I'm going to plug it right into point slope form. We've done this before. y minus y1 equals your slope, x minus x1. And I'm just going to leave it like that by plugging in my 1 for my y. I'm using this xy for my midpoint. My slope, 3 fourths, and x minus 6. If you needed to get it in slope-intercept form, you could distribute the 3 fourths and add the 1 over. But as far as I'm concerned, that's a, a quick and easy way as you get more and more into advanced mathematics. It's perfectly acceptable.